all guys welcome to the hill life homestead uh, like i promised you guys this morning when i made the uh hand squash pollinating uh video that i would do a garden tour of the garden i have this year for 2021 uh, my only regret is that i did not do a, a videos when i started this year so we kind of done a uh, progression uh, and i did an experiment with these tomatoes uh but we'll get to that uh, with cages versus the stakes but we'll start in this first bed these are, this is the pepper bed uh, and I got three different varieties in here. I've got the Lunchbox Crunchers. If you guys know what those are, they're little sweet uh, peppers that are orange. Uh, I got four of them here. Two of them are doing decent. Got one in the corner over here that's not doing quite so good. Uh, and then I've got a few jalapenos here. This is a mammoth jalapeno. Uh, and I think this one is too. Uh, and then this is just a regular jalapeno here. Uh, and then I've got some banana peppers up on this end. Uh, we got one here that's about ready. We picked a few of these uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, but I'm not a big pepper eater. The uh, rest of my family is, but me not so much. Uh, black pepper is about as hot as I like things, so I, I use these mainly for canning. Um, I do like the sweet peppers, but other than that, it's, uh, it's all for making salsa or chili sauce. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some videos of that coming soon too. Uh, we'll move over here. Like every every garden in, in Arkansas we gotta have some squash in here and this is the one I made the video on this morning uh, that we're hand pollinating uh, one thing I did not mention on on that video if you guys haven't seen that you can go uh, to my channel and, and find that one uh, but on this squash if you look down in here um, you know that you need to start hand pollinating these things if they start turning brown and rotten on the end uh, I think these are all in good shape this one here probably did not hand pollinate and you can see how it's turning this orange on the end uh, and that's not a good sign and plus the uh the stem going to it was already turning so i'm gonna say this one did not pollinate and it's uh it's really soft on the end so it, it wasn't going to make uh, so when you guys are looking at your garden and you see something like that it's going it's good to go ahead and pluck that off because uh, it wasn't going to make anyways and then if the plant is still feeding that then it won't have to go uh and waste all that energy on that on this end i've got some okra um it's coming up pretty good it's the clemson spineless okra um i'll go through and um you know take some of these out once i see which ones aren't, aren't growing as good but uh anyway that's the okra it's uh it's not doing too much right now but as it gets hotter it'll start doing better we'll move down to this middle bed here uh, and like I said, I wish I would have started this thing from the get-go, uh, the video on, but I didn't. In this front half of this, I had uh, some sweet peas, uh, but we've already harvested all those. So I went ahead and put me another succession of uh, squash in here. So as this one kind of tails off, this one will be coming on strong. Uh, planted onions down here. Uh, these are just sweet onions, uh, and I cannot remember the variety to save my life other than the, the white sweet onions. Or I mean, the, sorry, the yellow sweet onions. Uh, you also tell I got some volunteer tomatoes coming up in these from last year. This is the bed that I had my tomatoes in last year. And uh, I made a mistake over here. As you can tell, this thing is woolly. Um, I was planning on this being my berry bed, uh, and I was wanting some blueberries and strawberries. Uh, I, planned, I started with six blueberries and three strawberry plants last year. Um, at the end of last year, the strawberries had migrated out to about here, uh, and I knew I was gonna have a problem. So I was planning on building a separate bed for the blueberries and moving them this winter when they were dormant. Uh, but as as with everybody, life got in the way and I just not, did not make it to that. So uh, that has definitely got to be the plan this winter is to move those and I'll take you guys along with that. Uh, and it's just overtaken with the grass. I'm kind of embarrassed of the video, honestly, with all this grass coming up, but uh, you cannot reach down in there and get a handful of grass without not getting, or without getting one of these runners from this strawberry, because they're all the way down at the end of the bed. Uh, and I just can't bring myself to pull those up. So uh, in winter, when this all dies down, uh, I'll build a separate bed for these blueberries uh, and, and move them when they're dormant and just let these strawberries have the way with the rest of the bed, as they've kind of already done. Um, but I do love them. I'm, I'm also glad that we've got them, uh, but they, they will take over. All right, moving over to this side of the road. 
Um, this, these two beds here are for the uh, tomatoes. Um, and like I said at the first video, um, I wanted to try experiment. I have always used these cages uh, and I build my cages out of uh, concrete wire. So if you're looking to build cages, I highly recommend the concrete wire. It's really stiff. It's got the, the large holes. These are uh, six by six holes um, and it's, it's close to six foot tall. Um, so they hold up really good uh, for that. Like I said, I've been, the whole time I've been gardening, I've, I've been using these for my tomato cages. Uh, but I watched a video for the guy, uh, MI Gardener, where he uses these stakes uh, and does a single stem and ties them up. Uh, so I wanted to experiment, so I did half my bed uh, with these cages and then half with these. Um, and so far, uh, you know, so far so good. Uh, one thing with these is these are all romas. Uh, and then I've got my, I always like to do a, uh, a play bed and what I mean by that is just try different varieties and see how we like them and how they grow uh, in our climate um, but uh, so you know this variety of Roma is first time I've grown these but they are really bushy and they really really um, block out all the all the light and everything they're really thick uh, there's not a lot of room for airflow in there and with your tomatoes you need some airflow in between them so not sure how that's going to affect them. It's a lot easier to keep up with these over here with the airflow. You can obviously see the spaces in between there and things. And this second plant in this batch, it is aroma because I had an extra one left over. And you can see just how they they all bush up and, and, and grow like that versus one of these other ones that is more of a, a vine limb style tomato. But anyways, this bed back here, like I said, it's all aromas. Uh, I've got some Bradley pinks. Um, a celebrity mixed in there. I got a couple Parker's Whoppers over in the back corner. Uh, this one here is a Cherokee Purple. Um, and this here is a pink brandy wine. So, um, but yeah, it's really windy up here so far. The stakes are working out really well. Um, so I, I'm kind of excited. I can't tell you kind of where we're leaning again to do next year. Uh, we're about halfway through now. Uh, typically my tomatoes get you know they'll be over top of those cages and, and then folding down so at some point these will be way up here um so we'll time will tell and we hadn't really had very many summer storms either so uh, but anyway that is the garden tour today's june 19th um and i'll come i'll update you guys every week or so kind of let you know where we're at uh what things are working what things aren't and i appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys tuning in hit that like and subscribe button and uh, we'll keep them coming. Thank you.